It's a heavy metal theme on this week's World of Saltwater Fishing. Diego Toyran and I jig our way to success with pelagics and bottom fish over the lower Florida Keys wrecks and reefs. This educational and entertaining episode on flutter style jigging is one not to be missed. George Vovaromo's World of Saltwater Fishing. Big fish don't stand a chance. It was a rather brisk November day in the Florida Keys. Cudjo, which is located in the lower Florida Keys to be more specific. Uh, Diego Toyram is a uh, lower Florida Keys fishing authority. He cut his teeth commercial fishing for yellowtail mutton snappers before he got into the guiding into the business. And I've known him for a number of years now, fellow maker owner and just an all around good guy. He and I had done a show once before and we talked about getting together to shoot another episode at a Cudjo, this time sort of slanted towards flutter style jigging. This area of the Lower Keys and Cudjo Sugarloaf it's where a lot, a lot of the reefs, mainly the, um, the, 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 the reefs inside Hawks Channel, that's where they really begin. Well, the day starts with um, mainly, like I used to start fishing here in the Florida Keys in, in the Cudjo area, pulling pinfish traps. And I um, want to have a couple dozen of those just in case the flutter jigging is not productive. You always want to have a backup. So between the fresh bait, the live pinfish, and a selection of Williamson flutter jigs, we were all set to tackle whatever would come our way. It was a very short run to one of the offshore wrecks. Uh, Diego said, let's get out there somewhat early. There should be blackens on them. We could drop down and hit them with the flutter jigs. So we had made our way out to the Kendrick. We went offshore and went directly to the wrecks, one of the, one of the three wrecks down here in the Florida Keys in the Cudjo area called the Kendrick Destroyer. Get in there, look at the fish finder, the Simrad. We're looking for fish to mark. So as we started our drift on the upcurrent side of the wreck, we pretty much wait until we mark some kind of a life. We'd send these jigs down to the bottom near the wreck, work it a few times to see if there's any bottom fish, then started working these jigs up through the water column. And when we marked those tuna, we made sure that we dropped the jigs right underneath them and worked them through the school of tuna that we were marking. And Diego was first to bend the rod he was successful and landed the first black into the trip. Oh, what you got? Nice on top. I don't know, it might feel like a little black fin, George. Oh, I hope so. Am I, I in so. your way? I hope so. We'll see. But they're definitely here. Oh, something showed up. Something showed up. Plus you're doing it it's so good, the blacking on a spinner, well, you know, flutter George, jigging, pure artificial. You know, I um, for me it's easier to jig with a comes. spinner. All right, nice and easy. Ooh, oh, he's a little football. Right back here. He's a little football. You know, I thought he was a little bit bigger. Oh, the thing is, you caught him? Well, you know, the first one we hit, I, I happened to land it, and I looked at George, George was smiling at me, and he says, good job. But I really wanted him to land him. It was his boat, it was his trip, but he got me afterwards. He picked up two. George, Poveromo's World of Saltwater Fishing is proudly brought to you by Penn, let the battle begin. Mako, you'll find them where the fish are. Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's, your adventure starts here. Mercury Marine, go boldly. George, we'll be right back. We're back to the drill of marking black fins on our Simrad sonar and then dropping Williamson flutter style jigs to them. Diego Toyran and I are fishing at Deep Rex off Cudjo in the lower Florida Keys. And it was pretty much the routine that we were doing. We'd make that up current drift, we would mark the wreck, mark the fish, and start dropping down the irons. Making a drift, here we come again, and there are some black fins showing solidly in the Simrad. We drop our flutter jigs down. We start working them, and bam, my rod bends. I'm hooked up. I got him. 
That's him, George. That's him, George. <laughs> I think I'm filling your line now, Diego. I gotta come around you here, bud. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, coming out there. there go, go ahead. Okay, now come back here. He's running up to the bow. You wanna go yeah, behind I'm me and drop maybe or? I'm not gonna throw mine. Go ahead. <laughs> come on. That's a black finner we wanted, buddy. Yeah, he's black finning it. You got a gap? <laughs> Talk to me. Here he come, Diego. That's the black fin. Yep. Woo. Yeah, baby. I'll get him up there for you, buddy. Nice. <laughs> nice. Beautiful. Beautiful uh, black fin. Have a look at him. Look at him. Now I slap him off the gas. Nice, George. Beautiful fish. Water style jig. <laughs> Beautiful. That's about a little eight pounder, right? I thought it was 18. Yeah, 18, right? <laughs> <laughs> to double my odds of hooking fish, I've been replacing the single assist hooks on some of my flutter irons with VMC Tech Set tandem assist hooks. The VMC tandems are slightly smaller in diameter, and the gap between point and shank is wider too, both of which deliver better hookup percentages. Diego switched to a smaller Williamson jig with a single assist hook and missed a few fish, whereas I caught every blackfin that slammed my irons. The success rate of the tandem hooks would later carry over to the reefs. Nice. Nice. <clears throat> nice, George. There they are. Double up, buddy. There we go. <clears throat> They hit me, George. Yeah, definitely black finish. They hit me, George. I, I know he did. That would have been a nice double. Woo! You need the gaff, right? Uh, I have it handy, just in case. You never know. He's hooked well. I'll just grab him by the iron and lift him in. I think, I think that's a sashimi tuna. I will get the gaff in case. I think that's a sashimi tuna. That's a nice one. If you see something. Woo! You saw your hat or mine. I don't know which one. <laughs> I'll get you a shot here, hopefully. Take your time. Yep, for sure. That's a nice one. Woo! Nice tuna. Wait, 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 wait. Uh, not yet. Oh, not beautiful, Diego. Nice, nice, nice. What a difference on those fights here, too, huh? Good job. Good job. And Diego had a shot, too, and had a fish for a little bit, pulled the hook on that one. I ended up fighting a beautiful black tuna into the boat. We did pretty good, and he said, let's go ahead and shift gears now. Let's go drift a section of reef that's from 70 feet of water on off that ledge and see if we can't go get a mutton snapper and keep in, in the iron tradition. In other words, we were gonna go in there and put the flutter jigs to work on the reef. George Poveromo's World of Saltwater Fishing is proudly brought to you by Simrad, 75 years of innovation in marine electronics. Rapala holds the world record for world records. Suffix, always use the best line. Starbright Boat Care Products, clean and protect. George, we'll be right back. After jigging up blackfin tuna on the deep wrecks off Cudjo in the lower Florida Keys, Diego Toy Ran and I head to the reefs. Here, I'll be slow pitch jigging for bottom fish. After several blackfin tunas, which that was our targeted species, we decided to go inshore and target reef fish in deeper waters, like the mutton snapper. That was our number one um, 
species we wanted to target. So we started in 72, 75 feet of water and drifted right on the drop of the reef. That's usually where the mutton snappers like to hang out. They like to hang out in the reef also, in the rocky formations, but they like that sandy area right in the drop off between 80, 90, 95 feet of water. Traditional vertical jigging delivers a more straight up and down action. By comparison, slow pitch jigging utilizes light tackle, light braid line for ease in reaching great depths with lighter jigs and long rods. The objective on the upstroke is to push the jig outward as well. This expands the iron's window of action and generates a more radical panic illusion even during the fall. Light slow pitch tackle is a lot easier in the angler as well over extended jigging efforts. Now Diego knowing that we had live pinfish, he goes ahead and he drops out a mutton snapper rig. But while George was working the jig, guess what? He got popped first. First shot down a new fathom. Pen. Williamson flutter jig. 20 pound braid. Let's see what I got. Pen battalion two rod. This thing hit it on the bottom. First couple cranks, but let's have a look. Tell you what, you're having fun there. Check that, or mutton. mutton. Check that mutton. Woo! Oh. Beautiful fish! Beautiful! Oh, that's oh. beautiful. First drop down. There you go. You Check got him. that. You, you got him, because that's what you were after. Is it was. Is muttons in this area? And it looks just too good. Put a beautiful mutton snapper in the boat. And Diego's looking at me. He's got a live pinfish. He's working that live pinfish. I drop down with a flutter jig and bang a mutton right out from under him. How do you think he's feeling? A huge advantage for scrutinizing the ocean floor for potential fish holding structures are the line of ultra high definition bathmetric fishing charts by Simrad's CMAP Reveal. Every detail, nook and cranny along the bottom coverage area can be viewed in remarkable detail. Diego and I relied on CMAP Reveal to dial in on the specific sections of reef we ultimately decided to drift along. Well, George kept on working the jig, and then guess what? Pow, another mutton snapper. He's coming up the surface, almost like a cobia-like. Let's see what I got. Nice there fish. it comes, what do we got here? Talk to me, George. What is it? He's over there, nice. look at that mutton. Nice. Oh, Diego. Nice. Bring him in, bud. Nice. Oh, 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 oh beautiful. You got him on the same rig. It's pretty there much you the go. same rig. There you go, just beautiful. Deer in the Florida Keys? Are these deer indigenous to Big Pine Key? Christy Killam with the National Key Deer Refuge addresses these questions and then some. So they ended up here through a, a very interesting way and it's how a lot of our um, wildlife species down here ended up here on this last little high ground here in the Florida Keys. Thousands of years, this did not happen overnight by any means. Thousands of years, the yellow portion became what was our Florida Peninsula. So any of the, whether it was deer or bears or bobcats or alligators, uh, animals came and made use of that extra real estate. Well, glaciers started to melt. And as they did, sea levels slowly started to rise back up. And the green outline here represents kind of average of where we are today. So that's how the key deer are here. They didn't get dropped off here. People didn't bring them here. They came naturally on their own and geological, uh, hydrological circumstances changed in, in the Florida Peninsula, and, and so they're here today. Palmer's Resort on a Little Torch Key features a collection of cottages, suites, efficiency studios, and rooms spread across five beautiful acres. Situated off Pine Channel, Palmer's offers dockage, kayak and paddle boat rentals, and a 90-foot beach. The Honda State Park and Lou Key Reef are nearby and Key West is just a 25 mile drive away. George's Tackle Locker, brought to you by King Sailfish, the pioneer of catch and release mounts. Visit kingsailfish.com. Angle has been the pioneer in cooling and portable refrigeration technology dating back to 1962. Aside from holding ice and maintaining the cold for up to 10 days, which eliminates the inconveniences of daily re-icings, 
Their high performance coolers withstand the abuses of offshore fishing and racing through rough seas. Credit this, in part, to their roto molded polyethylene shell and non skid, non marking cornerstone feet, which keep the coolers in place regardless of sea conditions. They're so tough, we often perch atop and even fight fish on them. Credit for maintaining a cold goes to, in part, a full two inches of closed cell foam insulation in our lids, sides, and bottoms, and silicone gaskets for airtight seals. Coolers range in sizes from 25 to 320 quarts and come with a 10 year warranty. Angle prides their coolers on being IGBC certified bear resistant, but as many offshore anglers will attest, bears have very little compared to those extremely rough days offshore. In my opinion, that's where angle coolers really earn their salt. The heck with the bears. George Poveromo's World of Saltwater Fishing is proudly brought to you by the Florida Keys and Key West. Come as you are. ACR, the leader in marine safety electronics. Papa's Pilar Artesian Crafted Rum. Never a spectator. Float on. The original aluminum immersible boat trailer. King Sailfish, the pioneer of catch and release mounts. Visit kingsailfishmounts.com. You know, he said, hey, where did you bring me to? Well, this is, this is my old stomping grounds. And we had actually fished here before. In an old show we did, we, we caught some nice black groupers. And that's what we were hoping to catch. But later, the red grouper showed up to George again on the jig. What does it feel like, George? Feels like a bottom fish, or otherwise I snagged this fish. But it, we'll see. It's certainly not fighting like a king that's espoused. I'm starting to see some color coming up. Let's see what we have here. I think it's a big king, pal. Would, would you be happy with a grouper? Oh, black. Beautiful. Red grouper there. Red grouper, but he's legal. Uh, all right, let me get him the easy part here. Woo, beautiful. That's the right bottom. You know, at that point, I was gonna give it up when I grabbed the jig. To enhance vibrations and flash, I swapped out the stock treble hooks on our Williamson Gomami jigs with a VMC bladed treble design in sizes one odd and two odd. This tweak would surely draw in any mackerel. Well, we start seeing these marks on the Simrad screen up around the midwater column. They would come in periodically and you knew sooner or later as you're working these irons across the reef that the toothy predators would soon find you. To add to the sport, Diego and I fished 10 pound test Suffolk A32 braid on Penn Clash 2 3000 reels paired with Penn Battalion 2 rods rated for 15 to 30 pound test lines. To get the strikes, and at the risk of losing a jig or two, leaders were 30 pound test Suffolk's advanced fluorocarbon. I'm gonna double you up here, buddy. There you go. Things are getting hot here. Let's see what we have. Afternoon bite, however you guys want to do it. Oh! Fun, fun, fun. We're waiting for another species. Wait, I, I think I've got a mackerel. Once he saw your hat, oh. George, he took off. Oh, yeah, you're not yeah, bad. Okay. You're going gonna to tail him? Oh, nice. Oh, the winner is here. <laughs> Winter King mackerel. This is what we came here for. Check those out. Very nice. After washing the boat and cleaning fish, and scrubbing up a bit ourselves, we set forth to enjoy the day's bounty. Diego prepared mutton snapper ceviche style, whereas I prepared blackfin sashimi. How about that for a boat to table experience? It always makes it special when you have a plan at the end of the day, especially when you land at quality fish, and enjoying it between friends, fishermen, and in this case, the crew. It makes it special. Like my trip to Cudjo in the lower Florida Keys, Diego Toy Ran proved, is that we set forth to do a lot of flutter jigging, working the irons for not only black fins around the deep offshore wrecks, but also some reef species on some of these reef tracks. We had live baits, we had fresh cut baits, but in the end, it was the irons that prevailed. And it was never anything really in questions where it was like a close race. The irons, whether they're for the blackfin tuna, 
whether they were for the mutton snappers and some of the other species, outproduced the live baits and the fresh baits, which just goes to show that a lot of cases, the flutter jigging, slow pitch jigging routine, when you put the life into those jigs and you turn them loose, a lot of game fish can't resist them. If you want to keep track of our fishing adventures, we welcome you to follow us on our social media. I'm on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash george.poveromo. I'm on Instagram at George Poveromo. And you can see our shows in 4K broadcast quality on YouTube at my YouTube channel, which is George Poveromo TV. Jump aboard and ride along with us.